Hi, I'm Bob Weir with another interview of People in the News in North Texas. My guest today is Highland Village resident Jack Wyman, who is running for Congress in the 26th District of Texas. Thanks for being here, Jack. Thank you, Bob. Pleasure being here. My pleasure. Please begin by briefly telling our viewers something about your background. Well, I have spent my whole life, uh, my adult life, serving others. I've been in nonprofit uh, Christian ministry. I was with Chuck Colson's Prison Fellowship for a decade. I was a leader of a pro-family, pro-life political action organization for another 10 years. Uh, I've served two terms in the state legislature back in Maine. And uh, three years on the local school board in Connecticut. Uh, I enjoyed that. And uh, I also have taught American government at North Central Texas College right here in Corinth for eight years. Mm. And I enjoyed that. Mm. That's some of what I've done. I'm an ordained uh, minister and I've pastored four churches. Well, let's begin by uh, saying, um, with many Democrats supporting socialism, what are your thoughts on that system? Well, socialism doesn't work. Uh, that's pretty evident from uh, an examination of history. Uh, and if you look at, even today, uh, the countries where socialism has been tried, it has failed. Venezuela is a perfect example of that. Someone suggested that if socialism was really working in Venezuela, why are people wanting to come here exactly. to the United States? Exactly. So I, uh, I think it's uh, one of the seminal challenges and issues that we face today. Are we going to go down the road towards socialism, which many of the most strident, outspoken voices in Washington want us to do? Or are we going to reaffirm our commitment to the great values, uh, that uh, conservative values, that have made Texas and the United States of America great? Uh, free markets, Free people have given this country the greatest economic system and the greatest level of prosperity in the history of the world. So I think uh, we need to resist socialism and we need outspoken voices in our capital, in Congress, that are going to stand up and fight boldly against this encroaching socialism. I, say, I say encroaching is more like galloping. I mean, it's pretty shocking to see yeah. where the Democratic Party has moved uh, in recent years. All those uh, presidential candidates uh, supporting socialism, amazing, yeah. <clears throat> so I, I would say uh, amen to what you said. We have um, to resist that boldly. That's uh, why I'm running. Now, you, you, um, do you believe we need the wall, uh, uh, and do you think we should spend uh, some of the military budget on the wall? Absolutely we need the wall. I favor building the wall, and I commend this president, President Trump, for uh, bringing border security uh, to uh, a greater public attention. Uh, he has fought very courageously on this, uh, and uh, I commend him for it. I stand with President Trump, and I will be an ally of his on building the wall and securing our border. If we do not secure the borders of our country, Bob, we cannot have a country to say nothing of being a great country. To secure our borders is to secure our future. And so I support President Trump on that issue. And yes, I think that uh, his attempt uh, to use some of the military uh, funding uh, for the construction of the wall is uh, not only uh, his uh, constitutional right to preserve our national security, but I think it is very much in keeping with the purpose of our military, which is to defend the American people. And I view border security as a uh, defense and military related issue, Bob, absolutely, so I support that. So we have a serious problem uh, with the illegal immigration uh, uh, fracturing our social safety net, and uh, I think uh, most people would recognize that. So uh, we have candidates that are also uh, saying we should give uh, uh, health care for illegal aliens. How do you feel about that? Well, that is, uh, that is a bad idea. It's, uh, it's a horrible idea, and uh, it is unsustainable financially. It is wrong morally. It will not help secure our border. It will not help the American people. Uh, so I, I'm against it. I, uh, I am dumbfounded why any candidate running for president of the United States would support the idea of giving free health care to illegal immigrants. It's part of this open border mentality that I think uh, is very uh, uh, counter to the security of this country and to the best uh, interests of America. So, no, I, we can't do that. I mean, when you consider the fact, Bob, that there are millions of Americans who are living right here in this country legally, who are born here, who cannot afford health care, to be giving free health care to illegals 
to people who have broken the law is unconscionable. It's right. immoral, and as a member of Congress, I will not only vote against that, but I will stand up and fight against it. It is not in the American interest. Okay, uh, let me ask you about the uh, Second Amendment. Uh, are you a strong supporter of it? I'm a very strong supporter of the Second Amendment. Uh, I'm a card-carrying member of the NRA and uh, the gun owners of America. Um, I, I think we need to, uh, I believe very strongly, as a matter of moral conviction, that we need to affirm and protect uh, at all costs the Second Amendment, the constitutional right of the American people to keep and bear arms is a very important right. And while we uh, certainly are concerned about these shootings, we have to realize that the answer is not to penalize law-abiding citizens. Bob, you and I uh, remember that slogan from several decades ago, if we outlaw guns, only outlaws will have guns. Well, the truth of that uh, prevails. Uh, we, we cannot address this problem by penalizing law-abiding citizens, denying their constitutional right to keep and bear arms, and think that by doing that, we are going to reduce uh, gun violence. We are not. If you look at where we have uh, strong gun control laws, uh, that, some of those places, Chicago is an example, a prime example, you have some of the highest levels of homicide and gun violence anywhere in the country. Mm, so it just doesn't work. I'm uh, against it. And I'm against red flag laws. I, there are a lot of red flags uh, that have been raised about red flag laws. Mm -hmm. I mean, who is going to decide ahead of time? Well, like who that. is in danger of doing some harm? Uh, of what is going to be the criteria? Who's going to have the power to decide that? It sort of reminds me of the uh, movie Minority Report where, uh, yeah, Rose, yeah. Uh, where uh, police authority went in before somebody committed right. a crime and yeah. intervened because they said, well, they haven't done anything wrong yet, but they might. So I'm against red, fl red flag laws. I think that uh, that, too, is uh, going to harm the constitutional rights and this whole American idea of mandatory and buyback, process. mandatory buyback is just a euphemism for uh, confiscation. Exactly, <laughs> you know, that's so exactly what it is, and I'm against that as well. All right, and, and thanks for answering my next question about okay. red flag yeah. laws. Yeah. Uh, I will work to defeat those. Let's talk about uh, term limits for Congress. How do you feel about that? I'm a big, strong supporter of term limits. Uh, I don't think that the founding fathers intended for there to be career politicians. I think uh, that uh, when you have people serving these uh, long, long uh, terms in office, 15, 20, 30, 35, even 40 years, uh, I think it breeds political apathy and complacency on the part of the electorate because they feel there'll never be a change. And I think it breeds a level of arrogance on the part of people in Washington that have just stayed there too long. My opponent uh, opposes uh, term limits. I support them. So does Senator Ted Cruz. President Trump supports term limits, and 87% of the American people support term limits. Bob, when you stop and think about it, on what, what other issue is there where 75 to 85% of the American people have consistently supported something that Congress won't even permit the American people to vote on? Well, let me add, well, and on that vein, if yeah. you were elected, what would you do to implement term limits? I would co-sign legislation uh, to send this out to the people. I think what we need to do with term limits is, and Senator Cruz has, uh, I think, two consecutive occasions introduced a constitutional amendment. Uh, that requires a two-thirds vote of the House and the Senate, so it hasn't passed yet. But I would uh, support uh, efforts like Senator Cruz's effort to send a proposed constitutional amendment to the states. Let the states debate whether there should be term limits or not. Good. And then uh, let them decide. <clears throat> and if three quarters of the states, uh, the state legislatures, uh, vote for term limits, uh, then they'll be part of the Constitution. All right, Jack, I want to make sure I get your, uh, your campaign website in here. It's yes. www.jackwymanforcongress.com. JackWymanforCongress.com, and I want to say to uh, those who are watching, if you would like to learn more about my campaign and where I stand on these important issues, then I would invite you to visit JackWymanforCongress.com. And we need your financial support as well. So I hope that you will consider going to our website and making a donation to our campaign. 
our uh, opponent is going to be well funded and if we are going to run a strong and effective campaign against him then we are going to need your financial support as well so thank you for doing that that's jack wyman for congress.com well well said and thank you for being here jack and good luck in the campaign thank you bob's a pleasure as always thank, thank you. you very much and thank you for watching